This is Plane Maker Tutorial 36 and Blender Part 22. This is going to be a short video tutorial just to uh, give you some updates on where things are at. I've been away for a while again uh, working on the ERJ and since I was back from that I had some other stuff that came up and haven't had time to really get back into it. Now, what I want to share with you is tutorials 34 and 35 which talked about all the manipulators and how to make the lighting regions and all that stuff. Those are pretty much obsolete now because what's happened is I've teamed up with somebody who can program these export scripts and uh, he has been working diligently on a on a new version of the the script and this is his github uh, website this is where we're working on uh, it together it's github.com uh, slash der dash capital o n slash explain to blender so this is where the new developments are taking place and yes we're also working on a 320 uh, this is for blender 2.53 and it's still very much in the alpha uh, development stage but if you're interested in in helping code it or in making suggestions for improvement or stuff since blender 2.5 is out there's a lot of really good stuff coming our way and we're hoping to jump on that bandwagon as soon as the script is up and running blender 2.5 is still in beta phase so that's more for um, the adventurous ones of you out there to help out with that in the meantime, just a quick review. If you go to YouTube and you go to Plane Maker, you will find my tutorials are in two playlists. Uh, Plane Maker tutorials, these are the basic ones. These are the first 14 that I cover, and that's only Plane Maker stuff. And uh, uh, intro research, and then you can check out the, uh, the playlist down here. So the first 14 cover everything that has to do only with Plane Maker. There's no Blender covered in those, but it teaches you how to do the, the wings and the fuselage and then the cells and uh, animate the landing gear, the b basic texturing, basic cockpit creation, all that stuff. If you go back to the same search field that you went to for Plane Maker, a little further down there's another playlist uh, by the same author, by myself, using Blender with Plane Maker. And that's the next series of tutorials that incorporates, uh, first of all, you'll learn how to use Blender as time goes on. And as you move along, it will show you a little more about X-Plane's OBJ format and what you can do with lighting and all those th sorts of things. Now, tutorial 34 and 35 in this series delved into a lot of the technical aspects of, for example, opening up an object file in a text editor and taking a look at what it looks like there and, and doing hacks and tweaks and edits and all that stuff that was quite a cumbersome process that that I was hoping to eventually be able to spare you of and uh, sure enough well what what needed to happen is the export script needed to be configured in such a way that it could export from blender to the correct text or object format to begin with so it took a while but we have now released uh, version 3.10 of the script and it's also available here on this GitHub uh, website. And also there's support threads on xplane.org about it. All you would do is you would type into the search field explain to Blender. And you would get a list of recent activity with a support thread. Uh, there's one thread here, Blender to explain. It's got a title that's reversed, but you'll still find a lot of stuff that's going on here regarding uh, the script and its update and everything. So if you feel like helping or if you just want to download it and give feedback or whatever, this is the best place for you to go. This is a more dedicated forum now that's been established not long ago. So basically the goal here was to create a script that would be completely able to convert everything that you store in Blender to a usable OBJ file without having to go in and hack it. Well, it's been a long time in the making and I'm really thankful for talented programmers that have jumped in to, to render their services to this project. So before I get back to where I left off, let me just show you a little bit of what you can do with this new script. One thing I've learned in this whole process is that it's actually easier to load the script as a text file into your Blender window because then you can always call it up with a keyboard shortcut. See if you have the scripts window open here you always have to go here and then objects and then explain animation and it's kind of a lot of navigation that you have to do. It'd be easier to just jump into this window with a cursor and hit a keyboard shortcut and then you're into the you're in the script. So this is what you do. You open the text window and then you go open. Now it'll look different for you than it d does for me but I put all my downloaded scripts into this folder here and the one that I'm interested in for 
animating objects is this one right here, explainAnimObject.py. So I middle click on that one. So that opens up the script. It's all just text. Uh, you don't have to know what this text means. But basically the way it works is now I can select an object that I want to animate. See here we have, for example, a pedal adjustment button that is already parented to an animated bone. So if I go here and select the parented object and then put my mouse in the script window and hit Alt-P, it brings up the same interface as we were seeing before. This is a little bit buggy for me sometimes. I don't know, sometimes I get uh, double layer stuff. But what's been added to this script is the ability to add this functionality of manipulators. So if you go and read up on the Object 8 format, which you can do simply by going to your browser and typing in OBJ8, and the first result comes up and it tells you everything about Xplain's Object 8 format, about uh, the latest updates, what's supported, all that stuff. Our goal has been with the export script to support all these new features in the Object 8 format and have them integrated in such a way that when you're finished with your Blender project, you can save it as a source file and everything will be saved in that one Blender file and you don't have to go in and hack anything in the OBJ file. So this will allow you to assign a certain manipulator. Uh, these are all outlined in that website about the OBJ8 specifications. You can also assign what kind of a cursor you want it to be. I'll go into all this a little bit more in detail a little later, but it was covered in tutorials 34 and 35 in part. It's good to review those two tutorials even though the information is obsolete simply because it gives you an insight into what's happening underneath the hood of all of this process. So when I'm done uh, programming all of this, I just hit apply. And then when I export it, this button should have all the features that I need it to have. And as well, the lighting groups. And that works a little bit differently. We're going to be getting into that a little bit later. But tutorials 34 and 35 had a very cumbersome way of assigning lighting groups. And that has been simplified quite a bit. And I'll just give you a hint as to how it's done. It's using the game properties. So you go add property and you say attribute light level and then you enter the parameters and that gets exported. And it always gets saved here when you save your Blender file. So you, you always have that source to come back to. OK, so my next goal is to get back into the swing of things with these tutorials. I want to uh, spend some time seeing where I left off and see how I will integrate the new workflow with the new script. And then maybe we'll start uh, stepping over to Blender 2.5 at some point down the road. I don't imagine that being too terribly soon because uh, it, it'll probably be a matter of months before we start doing that because that's just uh, it's still in beta phase and the, the export script is still being written and all those things. But there you go. There you have it. And uh, so if you keep keep tuned, we'll probably get back into doing the nitty gritty stuff, the stuff that you've all been waiting for, like the external animations, the wing flex, the fan blades, the retract landing gear and all that stuff that uh, that needs to happen for an X-Plane aircraft's exterior. OK, that's all I'll cover for today. I do have some other projects that might be of interest to you. One of them being I'm starting to convert uh, Carinado's fleet of planes to X-Plane. The first one is out already. It's uh, Mooney M20J. And that is one that will give FSX people a side-by-side -side comparison between how X-Plane does versus how Flight Simulator X does um, what's possible in both platforms and stuff. And what I hope to see is that more FSX developers become interested in X-Plane and start porting their products over just to see a more vibrant uh, business community under the X-Plane platform. All right, that's all for today. Hope to see you around.